Onward is a magical quest for the whole family with mythical secrets and Easter eggs at every turn. Let's put it in O and begin our quest. Ian, played by your friendly neighborhood Tom Holland, is a teenage elf living in a magical turned ordinary humdrum world thanks to technology. Though we're treated to an effective montage of this concept at the beginning of the movie, one detail from the prologue hits the point home later on. Take a mental note of the goblet being guarded by the fire-breathing dragon. Later it shows up in a pawn shop, just taking up space as a pencil holder on a display case. But there's still some magic left in the world. On his 16th birthday, Ian receives a phoenix gem and a special spell left for him by his dad, Wilden, who died when he was just a baby. The visitation spell will allow Wilden to spend a day with his family and a chance to see the young men Ian and his older brother Barley have become. Barley is voiced by Chris Pratt. Hmm, Tom Holland? Chris Pratt? Is this a Marvel Cinematic Universe reunion? The MCU commonalities don't stop there. Did you happen to notice the color of the Phoenix Gem? It's the same color as the Soul Stone in Avengers Infinity War. Like the Phoenix Gem, the Soul Stone gave Thanos a glimpse of Gamora in the Soul World after he sacrificed her and oh, half the world's population as well. Of course, the Soul Stone is known to be housed with the other five Infinity Stones and the Infinity Gauntlet, which also makes a couple of cameos in Onward. Inside the Manticore's Tavern, and now a family restaurant apparently, there's a claw grabber game at the far corner next to the prize and merch counter. Did you see the claw inside? Yeah, it's modeled after the Infinity Gauntlet. Another place to find the Infinity Gauntlet just so happens to be a treasure trove for other myth-based easter eggs, and that's Barley's denim vest. The gauntlet is tricky to find here, because the patch is red and black, but the design is unmistakable. If you need a little help knowing what to look for, look no further than the sticker on the back of the passenger seat in Barley's van Guinevere. Got the basic shape now? Cool. Happy hunting. Psst, it's on his left breast pocket. So, what other treasures are to behold on Big Bro Barley's vest? Well, Hydra and Hades patches are emblazoned on both shoulders. Both are important to Greek mythology, a nine-headed snake monster, and the king of the underworld, respectively. But both also showed up in Disney's 1997 animated musical Hercules. Also on Barley's Hades side collar, did you see the lightning bolt pin? Shades of the almighty Zeus, anyone? Another really cool detail can be found on Barley's right breast pocket. Check out the bit of flare just diagonal below the eyeball, and you'll recognize what looks like a Union Jack pin. Union Jack is the name given to the national flag of the United Kingdom, but something's a little different with this design. You don't just see straight red stripes like on the Union Jack. The stripes flare out at the ends on Barley's pin, more like the red cross connected to the Knights Templar, a Christian order known for their involvement in the Crusades. Of course, every bit of flare on Barley's vest pales in comparison to the mighty phoenix patch across his back, but more on that later. These days, when fantasy comes to mind, the name of J.R.R. Tolkien is usually the jumping point. Did you know that Hobbit and Lord of the Rings-based easter eggs abound on Ian and Barley's quest? Near the beginning of the movie, feast your eyes on the fast food joint Burger Shire. Shire? A reference to the lovely home of the Hobbits. Of course, there's also a sign that reads, Now Serving Second Breakfast, which we all know is a time-honored Hobbit tradition. Next up, check out the cans of soda in the fridge at the Swamp Gas Station, top shelf to the right. If you miss them, you get one more chance to look for the big soda machine at Ian's High School in New Mushroomton later in the movie. The soft drink on offer is a play on a real classic Mountain Doom. It's Mountain Dew for the fantasy universe. Of course, the filmmakers are winking at the Lord of the Rings, specifically the volcano of Mordor, Mountain Doom, where Frodo Baggins must destroy the One Ring. Anything Lord of the Rings just screams to be plastered somewhere in Barley's domain, what with Barley's fantasy roleplay background. Take a look at the inside of Guinevere, and you'll see that he has a street sign bolted to the wood paneling. The sign reads, You shall not pass! One of the most quoted lines of Peter Jackson's film adaptation, thanks to Sir Ian McKellen's portrayal of Gandalf the Grey in the first installment of the series The Fellowship of the Ring. Barley is a devout gamer when it comes to the quests of yore, the tabletop role-playing game. He even refers to the game's Dungeon Master Manual when it comes to his and Ian's personal quest for another Phoenix Gym. They need a second one because something went wrong the first time they tried the visitation spell, so now they need to do it again in order to reveal the… well, the other half of their dad, Wilden. We'll get to that in a second. But did you know that Quests of Yore is more than just a Dungeons & Dragons knockoff? You too can get in on the fun, because the filmmakers not only produced Barley's annotated copy of the manual as a movie merchandising tie-in, they commissioned a fully playable board game, Quests of Yore Barley's Edition. It came out in fall of 2020. 
As I just said, the first time Ian cast the visitation spell, things didn't quite go according to plan, resulting in only the bottom half of Wilden's body. How do the boys know it's Wilden? Jump back to the Burgershire. Ian has a chance meeting with one of his dad's old classmates from college who remembers that Wilden always used to wear the ugliest pair of purple socks every single day. During Ian's first attempt at the visitation spell, take a look at the feet that materialize. Old school Disney fans might notice something else about these socks. They're not only purple, they're striped, like a certain feline from the Disney classic Alice in Wonderland, the Cheshire Cat. Another quality they have in common? The Cheshire Cat is able to disappear and reappear a few body parts at a time. Wilden? Well, he's a few body parts all the time, which is why Ian makes a stuffed top end for him. Want some more Disney and Pixar references? Remember the Manticore Tavern? When Barley and Ian enter for the first time, there's a family being sung a special unlicensed birthday song by the waitstaff. That same song is sung to Yzma in the Emperor's New Groove while Kuzco and Pacha make a sneaky escape. While we're on the subject of the tavern, take a look at some of the waitstaff. Notice how they're wearing sorcerer hats? Did you know that they're modeled after the hat Mickey Mouse famously wore in the Sorcerer's Apprentice segment of the 1940 feature animated showcase Fantasia? Another cameo from that same segment can be found later in the movie. Take a look at the illustration of the wizard when Barley is showing Ian the growth spell from his manual. The wizard looks just like Yen Sid, the wizard Mickey is apprenticed to in Fantasia. Speaking of wizards, there are a few easter eggs that surround the wizard at the beginning of the movie, like literally. Did you see the blue flora growing around the hill? Those are night howler flowers, the flowers that drove animals wild in the bunny cop Disney mystery Zootopia. But even more interesting is the young satyr watching in awe. You can see her again later being captivated by the light bulb. It's Bonnie from Toy Story 3 and 4. The Seder Kid isn't the only character whose model is inspired by an earlier Disney creation. Take a good look at Barley and Ian's mom, Laurel, voiced by Julia Louis-Dreyfus. Blue complexion, glasses, cable-knit sweater, she looks a lot like an elf version of Sadness voiced by Phyllis Smith in Disney Pixar's Inside Out. That's not all, Laurel is channeling another Pixar mom in the scene where she steps on one of Barley's figurines. Though this moment is a common one in most households with young kids, in the Disney Pixar universe one other mother feels Laurel's pain, and that's Andy's mom from the original Toy Story, when she steps on one of the little green army men on a mission to stake out Andy's new toys. This next one is sneaky. Did you happen to notice the brand of dishwashing liquid by Laurel's kitchen sink? The brand is Aurora. Aurora is not just a synonym for the word Dawn, which is also a real-life brand of dish soap. Aurora was the name of the Disney princess better known as Sleeping Beauty. Brands are a great way to find more Easter eggs, especially inside the Swamp Gas Station. Keep your eyes open and you might just catch a fun little Easter egg on the shelves. The infamous Triple Dent Gum from Inside Out. If chocolate's more your thing, feast your eyes on the counter. In the real world, we have Fifth Avenue bars. But in the world of Onward, they're known as Park Avenue Bars. Why, you ask? Because that's the name of the street where Pixar Animation Studios operates in Emeryville, California. If that wasn't scrumptious enough for you, then you must be chomping at the bit for these next Easter eggs. First, let me introduce to you Colt Bronco, Laurel's cop boyfriend voiced by Mel Rodriguez. Colt is a centaur, part man, part horse. Oddly enough, he even drives a Ford Bronco. But the point is, at the end of the movie, he receives a call from dispatch saying, We got a 113 in progress. There it is, your A113 Cal Arts Classroom Easter egg fix for this movie. And that's not the only recurring Pixar trademark. Were you watching closely when Barley and Ian were at the toll booth? On the far right corner of the screen is another familiar vehicle, the Pizza Planet delivery truck from Toy Story. But actually, did you know that the brand has a slightly different name in this universe? In keeping with the theme of the movie, the brand is known as Pizza Realm. In a realm full of sorcery and magic, how could Pixar not include their very own lucky rabbit's foot actor John Ratzenberger? Fear not, he's here, credited as construction worker Fenwick, who's part of the construction team sent to demolish the fountain that Barley holds sacred. Poor Barley. He may not be the most accomplished role model for Ian to look up to, but he sure tries hard, and it's obvious just how much he loves his little brother. Unlike his little bro, Barley actually has memories of their dad, where poor Ian only has a cassette tape of Wilden's voice to remember him by. Did you know that the cassette tape, and actually the whole story, was inspired by details of director Dan Scanlon's own life growing up without a father? I guess that makes Onward a tribute to his brother. Remember that phoenix patch on Barley's back? A phoenix is an immortal bird that is born again from its own ashes. Ian may not have had a dad growing up, 
but his big brother Barley rose up to be the father figure Ian needed in his life. I hope you enjoyed this video and found some magical new details you might have missed the first time in Disney Pixar's Onward. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Movie Logic for more daily movie trivia, secrets, and Easter eggs.